Hello there and welcome to another quick guide uh, tutorial, I suppose, um, from Cloud9 Spain. This time we're going to be talking about community fees. It's a question that we're asked by a lot of our clients. What are they? Who pays them? And how are they calculated? First of all, what are community fees? Community fees are paid by any members of a community um, here in, in Spain, in Andalusia. So if you imagine if you're living on a complex or if you're living in a, even in a detached villa, but you share communal parts, so that can be gardens, pools, elevators, and you have to share the upkeep of those, then you're going to have to pay community fees. Um, who pays them? Well, simple fact is any owner of a property that is part of a community here pays community fees. All properties here in Andalusia are freehold properties. We have people who come from uh, the UK, uh, from all over the world, who just don't understand the concept of community fees because they have their own private home um, in the, their own plot of land and they don't get involved. We get people from European cities and capitals who are very used to this idea, very accustomed to paying community fees. So they understand that as part of their um, communal areas, their elevators, their gardens, their pools, whatever, they have to be maintained and there's a cost to that. Um, in terms of who sets the budget uh, for community fees, um, that is you, the owners of the, the properties. So each year uh, an AGM takes place where there's a president and also a committee and also the other owners within the, um, the community debate the issues. The main issues are normally how much it costs to run the community. So whether we need to employ an extra gardener or whether we can get away with maybe uh, cleaning the pool once every couple of days rather than once a day. Those are the issues that, that tend to be debated. In terms of what's included in the community fees, what you're paying for, I always say to clients, it's basically everything outside your four walls. So that normally does include here in Spain because of the climate, the gardens, the pools, uh, security, um, the administration of the community, insurance, um, all those things, elevators. And if you can imagine, you know, all those add up, it becomes quite a big expense. How they're calculated is not just a straight divide. If you can imagine, if there were 100 owners of apartments in a complex and we all had exactly the same size property and the cost of running that particular community was 200,000 euros a year, then each owner would be liable to pay basically a, a proportion of that, which would be 2,000 euros per year. So 100 people paying 2,000 euros equals 200,000. Obviously, it's not as exact as that um, here in Spain because each apartment tends to be a different size. So you have what's called a coefficient. If your apartment is twice the size of mine, chances are you're going to pay around twice as much in community fees because you own more of the community. What that also means, though, is that you have almost twice the voting rights that I do at a community. So not only is, is that coefficient calculated uh, used to calculate how much you pay for the community fees, but it's also used to calculate your voting rights. So when important issues are being debated in the community and you want your say, you're going to have a little bit more clout than, than I would. What are the main things that that are debated in the community. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that the main one is 24-hour um, security. Security is expensive. If you imagine having 24-hour security, it's the equivalent of the community paying three people's salaries, three eight-hour shifts. That's fine. If you've got a community of owners of a thousand properties or two thousand properties on a big golf resort and you're paying 24-hour security, even two guys uh, three eight-hour shifts a day, then it's easy to dilute that cost across a thousand or two thousand owners. It becomes negligible. But if you've got a community of owners of, say, 50 properties, and all of a sudden you vote to have 24-hour security, you're going to notice that your community fees per apartment shoot up. So security is often the big debate within community. Some people love having 24-hour security for the um, the security that it, that it does give them. Some people don't believe in it. They'd rather have a, a good alarm fitted and lock up their properties. It's a debate that every community has. Um, it's sometimes the reason why you look at the community fees for, for a development and you think, how can, that, how can that be? Why is that one twice as much as the other one? Very often it's it's security that, that is the, the main cost in there. It can eat into the, the budget. It can even take up to about half of the budget. What to look out for? Um, how to spot a problem community? You'll know when you go out and look at properties with your, with your agent, 
you'll see the, the look and the feel of a community. You'll, you'll get an idea of how well run it is simply by having a look at the paintwork, the gardens. Are there people working in the community? Are problems being addressed? Are things being fixed? If so, and the community fees are um, a decent level, then yeah, that's probably a well-run community. If you've got a community that's charging the earth in their fees but not attending to any problems, then that money is going somewhere and it's important to find out where. Maybe it's going to service past debts, maybe it's they've got a problem with debtors in the community aren't paying up their community fees. So when I see something like that, I always highlight it to a client and say, look, we need to, we need to investigate what's happening here and see if we can get to the bottom of this. Um, but you know, very often people are misled. They think that they should be buying a, a property sometimes at 500,000 euros, a million euros plus, but they want to keep the community fees down to 100 a month. If you want an exclusive development and a classy, a classy resort, very often you're going to have heated pools, you're going to have elevators, you're going to have 24-hour security. All of that costs money. So sometimes the more exclusive a property, the higher the fees. I hope this has helped. Um, if you want to check out any of our other videos, please head to our YouTube channel. And thanks for listening.